Hello. Tonight I discovered this blog post from Marilyn Burns about a way that you can arrange cards such that when you deal them out, you get the ace first, and then you move the next card to the bottom. Then you get the two, and you move the next card to the bottom. And let's watch just a little bit of her video here. Let's jump to here. She's arranging the cards. And now, here she goes. Here comes the ace. She moves the next one to the bottom. Here's the two. She moves the next one to the bottom, and so on. And they all come out that way. So go and take a look at this so you can see the whole thing, uh, unless you think you've got it. And um, I'll show you in a spreadsheet how we can solve that problem. Or if you want, just think about it for a while uh, right now for yourself. Um, but what do we know? We know that the one, two, three, four, five come out um, in uh, alternating. So there's a one that, we, that comes out. And we don't know what the next card is. It goes to the bottom. And then we have the two. The next card goes to the bottom and so on. And um, we don't know what these other cards are yet. Well, that's what we have to figure out. So how about we give them uh, letters for now? So we'll call that A, B, C, D, and E. There's the 10 cards. Now let's just work through what happens. So we take the cards and now we're gonna, we're gonna take the one and you saw her deal off the one. So the one goes away. And then this next card goes to the bottom. So we don't know what it is, but we've called it A. So we move A down to the bottom. Now we'll repeat this. And um, we've dealt off the two and we move the B down to the bottom now. Now we have this. Let's jump ahead to here. And we deal away the five and we move the E to the bottom. And now we know that the next card is going to be a six. So let's change all the A's to sixes. And um, then as we continue on, we'll be able to find the values uh, for the other letters too. And that leads us to this. So here's the solution. If we start with this, then we'll, uh, we'll get what we want. How many ways are there to arrange 10, uh, 10 cards? Well, it's 10 factorial. So it's 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 and so on. And that's uh, 3,628,800. So we could try every one of those possibilities, and that's not such a huge number. Uh, we could do that in a modern computer pretty quickly. But we already know that the, um, we, we know where the 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are. So let's use that information to shrink the problem space. Okay, so we're going to need some loops. And I think we'll do something like this. Um, we will start out by uh, declaring that our first card is a one. And then for our second card, we're going to try lots of different numbers from two through 10, which in Python, oh here, four, C2 in range two, comma 11, which gives us the numbers two through 10. And then uh, within all those possibilities, we, we still know that C3 is a two, right? C1, C3, C3, one, three, five, seven, and nine are one, two, three, four, five. And then this is, uh, we're gonna be doing a little bit of repeating here. So I need, uh, I think, something like that. So we'll do now What's next? C4, and C5 is a three, and then we need to indent. And C6, and C7 is a one, uh, two, three, four. And now C8. 
and C9, C9 is a 5, and C10, and that's it. So we need to do something in here. Um, so let's build a deck. We'll say deck, and we'll make a tuple of C1 through C10. Okay, now let's see. If I, what, let me just check this. So we've got one, three, five, seven, nine are set to one, two, three, four, and five. And these should be the even ones. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Good. Now here we're kind of duplicating this bit of code. So why don't we extract that out and just call that R. And I'll put that here. Okay, so we now have code to enumerate these possibilities, these different deck permutations. Um, but we need to have a function now that will test the deck to see if it's the, in the right order. And um, so let's make a function. We'll call it um, correct order. So if the correct order deck, then we will print the deck. Print the deck. Okay, correct order doesn't exist, so let's make it up here. Correct order, and it's going to take uh, this deck that we're passing it as a tuple, so we can't change it. We need to be able to modify it. Like, um, you know, taking a, taking a card off the top, moving one from the top to the bottom. So let's call this the um, read-only deck. And then immediately we'll make, a, we'll put it into a list so that we can modify it. So we'll say deck equals list of read-only deck. L-I-S-T. Okay, so now we have the deck, we can uh, operate on it. So what are we going to to do. Um, first, we've got to keep track of the, um, the expected order of things. So the first card that we expect is a one. The next card we expect is a two and so on. So we have this. And then we want to continue operating on this until uh, and while we still have cards, so while the length of the deck is not equal to zero, while we have cards in it, uh, and now we'll pop the first card off the deck and store it in a variable called C. And now we need to see if this card that we popped off is the expected card. And if it's not, then we return false from this function because we know that we got the card, they got a card that was unexpected. So this deck is not in the correct order. So we return false. And um, after we go through this loop a little bit, after we've popped all the cards off, if the um, length of the deck is equal to zero, then we know that we have seen each card and observed to be true that each card was the expected card. So if we get this far, we return true because we know that the deck is in the correct order. Um, now we have to take that next card and pop it off the top and put it on the bottom. Remember that? So you deal off one, you take the next one, move it from the top to the bottom. So how do we do that with a list? Well, we can pop off the first one like we did before, deck dot pop zero, and then we can immediately append it to the deck. So we append the top card to the bottom. And then we need to adjust the expected card. So we have to add one to expected. 
Because after we get the one, then we need the two, and then so on. Okay, if I haven't made any mistakes, this is ready to go. Let's give it a try. Here's the result. 1621037495. And in the spreadsheet, 1621037495. So the brute force approach backs up what we've found through our slightly more intelligent, well, much more intelligent way. Here's a version of the same program with a few more features added so that when I run it, it not only shows the correct deck, but it tells how long it took to find it. Um, very short amount of time, less than two tenths of a second. And it tried 32,551 decks and it did about a half a million operations on the list. Operations being these pops and appends. Another thing I added that was very important. You remember the joke um, or the saying, why do I always find the thing I'm looking for in the last place I look? And then the punchline is because you stop looking when you found it. We forgot to stop looking after we found it. So I added this. After we found the deck with the correct order, we will now exit. So we exit the program rather than continuing to try the remaining permutations. Uh, okay, cool. Let's just end with uh, looking at this Marilyn Burns math blog that uh, led to me uh, led me to want to do this. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did, or half as much. <laughs>